Welcome to Board Game Game Boards, the show where we give you the how-to and review of today's top board games. I'm Lee. And I'm Tom. And today we're looking at... Takedo! Takedo is a board game for two to five players where you become one of several travelers venturing across ancient Japan. Along the way, you will meet new people, eat interesting food, bathe with monkeys, and more. All so that when you reach the end, you will be the winner by having had the most amazing trip. Bathing with monkeys? That reminds me. Inside, you'll find a very unique rectangular board illustrating the root of Takedo. Hold up. What's a Takedo? Sounds like it's time for a 10 second history lesson. Takedo is an important route in Asia, Japan, following the eastern coast, connecting Hido, which is Tokyo, to the city of Kyoto. The route was over 500 kilometers long, and everybody except for the super rich had to follow it by foot, which must have sucked. But anyway, let's get back to the box. Along with the board, you'll find character tiles, player pieces, point markers, color tokens for each player, coins, and a whole mess of cards. The instruction book is awesome at covering everything you need to know and putting it in a very easily digestible format. But you should keep watching just to see our beautiful faces. Let's set up like we're going to play a game. There are special rules for a two-player game with a third piece not controlled by anyone, but we're not going to do that. Zombie player. Lay the board out and place your point marker at the top of the board on zero. You gain journey points by having rich experiences along the road, and this is how they are tracked. Next, place your traveler piece at the inn. There are five in total, and each one is a mandatory stop. Shuffle all the character tiles, and each person draws two at random, keeping the one they desire. The starting coin amount is in the top right, a cutout made for you to put your token in is in the top left, and the character's ability is at the bottom. The abilities are explained in detail in the instruction book. You each take turns traveling down the road, going to different spaces that provide different experiences with only one person per spot but extra dots on some spaces are for four to five player games. The player farthest from the food bowl goes first. They may move as far down the road as they choose. So I'll be player one. And why do you get to be player one? Because I have the hat. What hat? I have several options right in front of me, but I think I'll go to the village. At the village, you can draw three souvenir cards of which you can buy all of them, none of them, or anything in between. In order to get the most points, you'll want to complete a set, which is one of each of the four types. Each addition to the set increases the point value as indicated on the card. So the first is one point, the second is another three points, and so on. Have two of one type? No problem. You just begin a second set. Now being the pious guy I am, I think I'll go to the temple. But first, we must listen to Old Max Riddle. Typical Lou Barracuda. Nothing hidden about this temple. It's located on the board right above the starting positions. Each player who lands here must give one, two, or three coins to the temple by placing their donation on their corresponding spot. Players receive one journey point for each coin donated, and at the end of the game, players receive points depending on the number of coins they've donated. On my turn, I'm going to paint at a panoramic spot. There are three types, paddy, mountain, and sea. The paddy set needs three cards to complete. The mountain, four cards, and the sea needs five cards. The first in the series is worth one point, the second another two points, and so on. When you land on the space, you take the first in the indicated series, or if it's not your first, then the next in the series until you've completed the scene. I remember my first. The first one to complete each scene gets a special achievement card awarding three journey points. I guess my girlfriend was wrong. Speed is where it counts. Hey Tom, check out the painting I've been working on. You know, I'm starting to feel a little dirty on this journey. Sounds like you should hit the hot springs. When stopping in a hot spring, draw one card from the deck. Two points for a bath, and three points for a monkey. I'm going to skip the mountain panoramic and go to the farm spot. At this spot, you get a free three coins, because that's how farming works. So if there's one thing my mother taught me, it's always to talk to strangers. So let's go to the encounter spot. One of five encounters could happen. A merchant could give you a free souvenir. 
Maybe a guide will give you the next in a panoramic series. A priest could give you another coin to your temple. A wealthy noble may just give you three coins. Or a freaking samurai could give you three journey points. Now for my next turn, I'll go to the village and buy a souvenir. But at the end of my turn, I'm still farthest back, so I'll go again. Maybe hit the hot spring. Whoever gets to the end first is the first to eat. You draw one meal card for each person playing, plus one more. So for us, three. Their cost is indicated at the bottom of the card, but each one is worth six adventure points. So I hope you save some coin. These steps are repeated at each end. Oh, and you can't repeat foods. Last one to the end is the first to leave next morning. Play continues this way until every player has enjoyed their final meal at the last inn. There are four special achievement cards, each awarding three journey points. One for taking the most baths, one for having the most encounters, one for collecting the most souvenirs, and one for having the highest sum of coins invested in food. Hopefully you've been keeping track of your score all along the way, but if you forget... Like we have every game we played due to the speed of gameplay and once you get going... Then just add up all your journey points. If you've kept your encounters, meals, bath cards, souvenirs, and panoramics, then you should be able to add up your score. Don't forget to add your temple coins and the bonus points for having the most, second most, or whatever donated coins. As long as you donated at least one coin, you get at least two points. The player with the most points wins, and they get to brag about having the best trip. Now, let's talk about some pros and cons of the game. It provides quick gameplay, especially after everyone starts to figure out their own strategy. And the collecting aspect is also very fun and addicting. However, there are a lot of little cards and pieces that could get lost. Final decision, bye. The art is beautifully stylized, as is are the design of the cards on the board. It's real easy on the eyes. The negative factor would be the journey point tracker, which we always forget to use. But final decision, bye. Well, that about wraps it up for another episode of Board Game Game Boards. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know what other games you'd like us to play in the future, and we will definitely, maybe, get around to playing them. Tom, are you thinking what I'm thinking? <laughs> Time for a journey. <laughs> And why Atlanta? Because George is known for three things. Peaches, pecans, and pandemics. If you say so, but also because the Center for Disease Control, or CDC, has their headquarters there. Yep. And the peaches.